During the last 60 hours, if you were to have hypothetically dug a 100 foot deep hole in the ground underneath the town of Greenavik, you may have very well struck magma at one point. Although this is still slightly uncertain, on November 12th magma was potentially as little as only a few dozen meters underneath the town. The intrusion of this magma combined with the subsidence caused when the magma shifted elsewhere caused numerous several meter deep extensional fissures to form throughout the town at the approximate location shown on screen, even splitting several buildings. If you are curious as to how much the ground moved, in only a 6 hour period on November 10th, the ground underneath Greenavik subsided by up to 1.2 meters or 3.94 feet and expanded in an east to west direction by 30 centimeters or 11.8 inches. Buildings are generally not made to be able to withstand such extreme ground movements, hence the fairly widespread damage in the town. And now, on November 13th, gas has been spotted rising from these cracks which has a notably white color. So, is a dangerous volcanic eruption about to take place in the middle of town? While this could still very well occur, I am actually leaning towards this not occurring in the short term future. As the gas which was spotted, in my opinion, was most likely not truly volcanic gas from very shallow magma, but rather rising steam generated by burst hot water pipes. And in the last 36 hours, the situation appears to have rapidly changed underneath Greenavik, despite the fact that it really was just minutes away from an eruption at one point. As the ground has continued to subside across the entirety of the underlying dike. Yet, this subsidence is occurring in an uneven manner with more significant subsidence occurring further south of the dike intrusion and increasingly less subsidence occurring during the last 36 hours the further north you go on the dike. Thus, I have two potential explanations for this activity and both involve magma slightly draining away from where it was once shallowest. Possibility 1 is that at depth magma is draining away from where it was previously intruding near Greenavik and under the ocean and is now going towards where magma was first pulling in this dike several days earlier. This possibility revolves around the least amount of recent subsidence occurring around a crater route referred to as Sindahuk Akigar. However, this would not explain why it too is also experiencing minor subsidence. The second possibility is that since earthquakes are now occurring at increasingly northward locations, it could indicate that the subsidence we are seeing is caused by minor dike propagation northeastward at what was previously the very northern end of the dike. Thus, magma might be draining from near Greenavik and moving northwards. Regardless of which is the case, we now have a good estimate on the approximate amount of magma involved in this current unrest. Specifically, a volume of 70 million cubic meters, or a little less than half what Fagradolsviak erupted during its six month long eruption in 2021. However, despite this apparent change in fate, the sheer unpredictability of what we have witnessed the magma do in the last three weeks really indicates that we don't yet fully understand this volcanic system, which is called Rekinas, and covers the area shown on screen. In other words, while it might look like Greenavik has been spared complete destruction, we might be misinterpreting ongoing magma movement and it could suddenly erupt within the town still, or another shift could occur, once again sending magma intruding underneath Greenavik. Regardless, I do believe that Greenavik remaining evacuated like the current policy for now is the correct decision, as the area is not yet safe and a volcanic eruption still could unexpectedly occur there. Thus, while a volcanic eruption still could be imminent, the odds of an eruption occurring in the next 36 hours now appear to be lower than they were during the last 36 hours. As a final note, I would like to thank this channel's new patron, Joseph McWade, for supporting this channel.